Tonight, Facebook scrubs the news feed, Twitter's going all in on mobile ads, and how pilots are flying planes with their brains and brains alone. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 95 for Tuesday, May 27th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by Nature Box, where you can order great tasting, healthy snacks delivered right to your door. Forget the vending machine and get in shape with healthy, delicious treats like praline pumpkin seeds. They're good. I should know. To get 50% off your first box, go to naturebox.com slash twit. That's naturebox.com slash twit. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into the tech feed. So last week, Facebook pulled auto-sharing of likes and comments and other activity from its latest version of the Instagram app back to Facebook. Today, the company announced auto-posted stories from apps like Pinterest and Farmville, Spotify, and RunKeeper will show up in our news feeds less often, and the company even says it wants to discourage developers from adding auto-posting to their apps. This comes after last year when Facebook noticed many users were marking auto-posted stories as spam. When these kinds of stories were decreased from the news feed algorithm, the company says those spam numbers dropped 75%. Doesn't seem like people want too many of those. Facebook calls this the de-emphasis of implicitly posted stories and makes the news feed higher quality content while also helping developers better implement Facebook sharing tools like messenger integration, et cetera, inside their apps. Today, LG officially unveiled its new flagship smartphone, the G3, at events in London, New York, and San Francisco. It's a 4G device running Android 4.4, has a Snapdragon 801 processor, comes in either a 32 gigabyte version with three gigs of RAM or a 16 gigabyte version with two gigs of RAM. The screen is a 5.5 inch panel as opposed to that 5.2 inch predecessor. LG icons have been redesigned as circles. Design is a bit flatter overall and the software is designed to prompt users about unused features on the phone after they've owned the phone for a while. I don't know, that part sounds annoying to me. A front-facing camera is 2.1 megapixels, and LG claims it's better than many Chinese-made phones that offer 5 megapixels on the front because of its improved sensitivity. And as we mentioned last Friday, a 13-megapixel rear camera has a laser cone, which apparently improves autofocus. No fingerprint sensor, although LG claims its knock-on code security tap pattern is plenty good. The G3 will launch in South Korea first and will be available in the U.S. and Europe next month. Today, a 110-page report published by the Federal Trade Commission covering the activities of nine data brokers representative of the industry, Axicom, CoreLogic, DataLogics, eBureau, ID Analytics, Intellius, PQ, Rapleaf, and Recorded Future you may not have heard of them, is the catalyst behind the FTC's recommendation to the Congress that it require companies like these to be a lot more transparent about the data that they collect, even though nothing that any of these companies doing is illegal. However, in the U.S. alone, if you look at just one of the nine data brokers profiled in this FTC report, it holds information on more than 1.4 billion consumer transactions, 700 billion data elements, and adds another more than 3 billion new data points to its database each month, and in some cases, holds on to this data indefinitely. Hmm. AdAge is reporting that Yahoo is in talks with video producers to launch its own version of Google's video service YouTube later this summer, citing anonymous sources familiar with the plans. The company apparently wants to undercut YouTube with more generous revenue sharing deals or fixed ad rates that are attractively higher than what YouTube delivers to its creators. Those who sign a contract with Yahoo reportedly will get a publishing dashboard to be able to distribute across Yahoo's homepage, blogging service Tumblr, and then a network of non-Yahoo sites. Now, YouTube's standard rev split has Google taking about 45% of ad revenue. Of course, some of their top partners have better deals than that. Yahoo may decide to offer the option of a fixed ad rate, said to be 50, up to 100% higher than YouTube's average net ad rate. Video seems to be a big priority for CEO Marissa Meyer. Last year, Yahoo tried to buy Daily Motion in a deal that was blocked by French authorities. And there have been whispers about Hulu, Maker Studios, and full screen acquisitions, none of which have actually happened. In a moment, controlling a plane with your mind. 
It's so crazy, it's actually working. But first, we want to thank Nature Box for keeping me out of the vending machine at 3 p.m. 3 p.m. is just when I start to have a meltdown. I'm cranky, I'm starving, I make terrible food choices. We have a candy jar back there. It's just not good news. Don't give in. Keep your eye on looking and feeling great and eating good stuff with Nature Box. Head on over to naturebox.com slash twit and then click on the continue button and then you can choose between three subscription options. And once you do that, you place your order. When you're a Nature Box member, what you do is you select which snacks you want in your monthly box that gets delivered to you. You can choose vegan, non-GMO, gluten-conscious, lactose-free. They've got it all. And you can also select by taste anything from very savory to very sweet. I've actually been snacking all day. Nature Box sends great tasting snacks right to your door. Free shipping anywhere in the U.S. Banana bread granola, peppery pistachios, over 100 different flavors. Best part, all with zero trans fats, zero high fructose corn syrup, nothing artificial ever. It's the snack happy gift that keeps on giving. You can order a three, six, or 12 month subscription for that special someone, family, or friend. It's time to snack smarter. Forget the vending machine and get in shape with healthy, delicious treats like South Pacific plantains. Remember, get 50% off your first box by going to naturebox.com slash twit. Stay full, stay strong. Go to naturebox.com slash twit. And thanks to Naturebox for their support of Tech News Tonight. Joining me now is Anthony Ha, writer over at TechCrunch. And Anthony, I thought that we could talk a little bit about all the great stuff that's going on with Twitter. Are you game? Absolutely. Let's do it. All right. So we've got a, a big deal between Twitter and Omnicom. It's a mobile-focused deal worth $230 million over the next two years. Now, for anyone who's not you know, up on how these sorts of companies put together some sort of a mobile-focused deal, what does this mean? Well, I think that um, initially it means that Omnicom and uh, Mopub, which is the mobile advertising company that Twitter acquired last year, um, will be working closely together. It doesn't necessarily mean anything immediately for Twitter itself, but obviously down the road, I think that's where people see a lot of potential. So, okay, so if 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 Twitter's got Twitter's got Mopub, it bought it last September, I think it is. Yeah. Does this just mean in general what Twitter is doing is doubling down on uh, its revenue because that's where it knows that uh, the, the revenue is going to come from? Again, to make another comparison to Facebook, seems to have been, have been worked uh, very well for Facebook, even though Facebook was a little bit late to its own mobile game. Yeah, I think that that's, you know, clearly a big focus right now. I think that um, also Mopub as, you know, uh, an area, you know, with mo with its focus on mobile and on programmatic ad buying, I think is an area where it just it seems like a lot of um, the big ad company ad holding companies are sort of interested in right now and and interested in trying to plug in. I I'm one of the people who uses Tweetbot. I have for a long time. As long as it's a product, I, I think I'm going to stick with it. So there's a lot of this ad stuff that I hear about, but really as a day to day user, I don't see. Is that an right. issue for Twitter? And uh, you know, what about people like me? Well, I don't think it's an issue. I think it just means that, you know, hopefully you're presumably probably seeing some ads like like sponsored tweets and things like that. And, um, you know, that's coming through. It's just not necessarily a big part of the Twitter experience. And I don't think they want it to be. I think they want it to be something that sort of, you know, kind of slides in there. Um, so I, I, I wouldn't say that that necessarily means anything bad. Okay, let's move on to, uh, this is kind of interesting, eMarketer put out its first forecast of Twitter users um, that the user base is supposed to increase mm, just under 25% in 2014, and that's not even counting China, uh, because of course there's a countrywide ban on the Twitter site, but that this year, that whole Asia Pacific region will account for 32.8 of all Twitter users which already trumps North America. And then if you look ahead another, you know, the, of course, these, these are just analyst numbers, but 2018, that same region, the Asia Pacific, will more than double North America's share. Now, right now, a lot of emphasis is still put on North America because that's where most of the ad revenue is coming from. But how does Twitter shift as the numbers of its user base also shift regions? Um, I think that it's it's probably in a similar position to uh, a lot of the other internet companies now, where I think it is just more and more of the energy is going to to the you know emerging markets, which is a I mean kind of a loose term, but um, I think certainly you see that at, at Facebook as well. Which I mean I think when you sort of take that as far out as, as Facebook is, it's a lot of it is also just getting more people 
on the internet, getting more people on smartphones because they, they realize that's where the opportunity is. I mean, in Twitter's case, I think it's also a, case, uh, a situation where, you know, a lot of, um, there's a lot of discussion now about growth at Twitter and if they have, you know, if they've sort of, you know, plateaued. And I think this is a sign that there's an opportunity to continue to grow really significantly, just maybe not in North America. Speaking of opportunities, Billboard and Twitter have officially launched the Billboard Twitter real-time charts. Uh, Kanye West was at the top of it last time I checked, probably because he just got married. But these are ranking the most popular songs being shared on Twitter, at least in the U.S. Yeah, there was also the rumor that Twitter was close to buying SoundCloud. That doesn't appear to be happening. Twitter music got shelved. But it does seem like Twitter understands that music is something that is being shared a lot on the service does this, I mean, who is this really for, though? Uh, well, that's an interesting question. I mean, I, <laughs> I don't think they even know yet, because, I mean, I think that was the issue with, with Twitter Music, right, was that it was cool. Were there a ton of people going there? Um, I'm not sure that there were. I mean, the fact that they shut it down seems to suggest that, that it wasn't. Um, I mean, I would imagine initially it's going to be a lot of sort of, you know, either people who are just music junkies or, or people who are in the industry where I think, you know, there, there is, I think, this attempt right now to really kind of, grapple with, you know, the fact that the traditional metrics of measuring music popularity maybe aren't, um, you know, the best right? or that don't necessarily reflect sort of what people are really talking about right now. So I think they're going to, they're looking to something like Twitter. Is this going to be a big popular consumer service? I'm not sure that it is, but I don't, you know, it'll, in some ways, I think it's going to be, you know, the people who, the kinds of people who care about the other billboard charts um, are going to be the kind of people who take a look at this. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, Kanye is not at the top anymore, so I guess the I guess the chart is ever changing. It's <laughs> gonna be bumped out. Yeah, <laughs> well, I, I think it changes like every hour or something like that. Uh, okay. Yeah. Right. So yeah, it just seems like Twitter's sort of in this constant experimentation mode, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but keeps things right. interesting. Anthony Ha writes over at TechCrunch, uh, based out of New York. Anthony, thanks so much for joining us, and let folks know where they can keep up with your work. Uh, they can come to TechCrunch.com to see my tech coverage, and they can follow me on Twitter at Anthony Ha. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me. All right, finally, I was talking about flying planes with brains. I'll tell you what I mean. New research out of the Technische Universität München. I don't know, It's that's German. It's in Germany, it's a university. It's demonstrating how mind control might keep a plane afloat. So they've demonstrated that pilots can actually fly planes through the sky on thought alone, at least conceptually. Researchers hooked study participants up to EEG caps in front of a flight simulator, told them to steer the plane through the sim using thoughts alone. Now, the cap read the electrical signals from these brains, and then an algorithm translated those signals into computer commands. Here's the crazy part. All were able to pilot the plane using their thoughts Enough so that their performance could have satisfied some criteria, at least for getting a pilot's license. And one of these pilots had no cockpit experience at all. Aerospace engineer Tim Frick, who heads the project, said in a statement, quote, with brain control, flying in itself could become easier. This would reduce the workload of pilots and thereby increase safety. In addition, pilots would have more freedom of their movement to manage other manual tasks in the cockpit. And that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. Write us at TN2 at twit.tv. And don't miss Tech News Today. That's tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.